Hello and welcome to Sound Librarian. I'm Stefan Schutz. I never played the original Silent Hill game on the PlayStation 1. I think I saw about five minutes of somebody else playing it. I didn't have a PlayStation 1 at the time. It came out in 1999, I believe. I did, however, play Silent Hill 2 and I played it all the way through to the end. And it was really disturbing in places and it was quite scary in places. From a design point of view, especially a, a, an artistic and creative design point of view, I found it was really, really interesting. I thought they did some really wonderful things. Um, the shift of perspectives and perceptions were really, really outstanding. Some of the characters were truly frightening. And the sound had some significant aspects in it as well. In fact, the sound and the music. So we're going to have a look at Silent Hill 2, and we're going to analyse, I guess, some of the things that can be done well and perhaps not so well in survival horror games, which is a huge genre, and we're going to see how effective Silent Hill 2 is. Silent Hill, to me, is somewhat an unusual game from an audio point of view. I got a letter. And why I say that is that the name I've listened letter. to the Silent Hill Said soundtrack Mary. as I've played the game, and I've also listened My to it separately, just as a normal soundtrack. It's ridiculous. And I absolutely it's love true. the Silent Hill soundtrack. I think the music for Silent That's Hill is really myself. excellent. In general, it has a good quality, but some of the pieces in particular are just outstanding. By contrast, I think the voice acting is atrocious. Um, now, admittedly, this would have originally been written in Japanese, and the Japanese have a very different style of dealing with voice acting um, and voice narrative within a game. However, when this game came out, visually it was stunning. The sound in it is really quite interesting. Um, and the story is quite interesting, but we spent the, whole day the voice acting sounds like you're listening to some sort of Just really, really cheesy commercial, the water. and it drags it down so much. Could Mary really be there? And in some ways I'd like to see games like this uh, almost just lie? revamped. Don't touch anything Waiting about the story for. or the overall layout, but please <laughs> redo the, the script and the dialogue. See, for me, based on, on that, if I didn't know anything about this game after that sort of snippet of dialogue, I'd be quite tempted to just pack the whole thing up and put it away as a joke. Um, and I think this is one of the things where audio has been done a, a disservice over the years. I think a lot of people have just thought, well, we've got to put in some dialogue, we've got to put in some audio, and haven't realised how much of an impact it can have. Because this game, in so many other ways, was incredibly atmospheric and really, really disturbing. And yet, as I said, that, that dialogue just makes you feel like, okay, this is, just, this is just pathetic. Anyway, let's get over the dialogue and move on, because... There are aspects of Silent Hill that are really worth having a look at. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to start by focusing a little bit on some of the negative things because initially so much from an audio point of view when you start this game seems to be quite negative. And it's strange because the things that are negative are so bad and the things that are positive are so good. It feels to me almost as like there were two entirely different audio teams working on this project. So here we have one of my biggest bugbears in games anywhere and that's footsteps. And the footsteps in this game are atrocious. It sounds like just the same two sounds alternated over and over again, no variation. Now I understand that obviously they were dealing with the limitations of the platforms, but there have always been ways of improving that situation. And the team that worked on Silent Hill just didn't do anything about it. And the reason why I care so much about footsteps is because the one sound that will accompany you through this entire game, no matter where you are and what you're doing, are the footsteps of your main character. And they should be good enough that you can ignore them. Whereas these footsteps are so bad that they just stick out. And so that was something that for me was just so strange that the footsteps were just really, really awful. And yet when we get onto some of the other audio elements, things flip into the other direction. Now again, we have the footstep issue. But the sounds in the background are where the real quality of Silent Hill 2's audio comes out. The, the music, and if you want to call it music or ambience, at times it's a little bit blurry, has some incredible, incredible industrial sounds attached to it. And they are discordant, they are quite often uncomfortable to listen to and they're, they're outstanding because they really make you feel like oh what's going on where am I what's going on this is not a normal place and I think that's an important part of it So this entire mechanic is introducing you to uh, your first discovery being the radio. And that whole segment was static from the radio. Oh yeah. This thing broken? Take it anyway. I might need it. So the radio static alerts you to when there is an adversary around, as we just saw there in that scene. So now you are carrying a device on you that basically makes a particular sound whenever there is a threat around you. And this is a really, really good mechanic. But the thing that gets me is the sound of the radio and the sound of that whole scene we just left was so good, it was so atmospheric, it was so disturbing, 
it seems hard to believe that the same people created that as created the, the awful footstep sounds. So now we've got the radio going again. of dealing with these creatures is unpleasant. They look unpleasant, they move in a very disturbing way, and of course the sounds that accompany them are suitably disturbing. But the radio indicates to you when the threat is gone. Now this is what a lot of other games do with their music, their action music coming in and fading out. I find this actually, this mechanic works so much better in Silent Hill with the radio because it just it's this eerie disturbing thing and all of a sudden when you hear the radio you start to panic so this is what I mean when I say that uh, Silent Hill had some really really very well done sound design that again becomes part of the ambience and part of the gameplay so now having moved inside we have very very different ambience we're feeling far more claustrophobic because it's harder to see things. It's obviously harder to move. We can't run away from things quite as easily as we can outside. But a lot of what occurs inside is simply moving around and exploring. You often won't actually uh, encounter anything for quite some time. And so it's that tension of, I'm not sure what's going to happen next, rather than constantly being attacked by monsters. It's almost an, an old school horror movie style of doing things, which actually serves this game very well. So again, inside we have monsters and the radio lets us know what's going on. And now we've picked up a torch. We're getting this small area of light for us to work within. So everything with moving inside is uh, disturbing and claustrophobic. The feedback you get from doors being either locked or being openable. Um, the sound design inside, the general sound effects I find perhaps are the issue, whereas the ambience come music is very, very good. And as I said before, they, they quite possibly are done by two different people. Yes, do you want to reach through where you can't see very much and see what's going on? <coughs> Silent Hill does this a few times. When I first did this, I was expecting something very large is going to come along and tear my arm off. So the tension is huge until that point. Hey, wait! Damn it. And then you find out that it's a little girl. So that was actually a very cute narrative element. Um... But there was also, there was complete silence there when you did that, which very much contributed to the tension build-up. And Silent Hill has a couple of very, very good moments like that, where there's very, very uh, high levels of tension as you're unsure what's going to happen.
absurdity of that creature is also what makes it so incredibly effective. We shouldn't be disturbed by what if effectively is a person with a giant triangle for a head. And yet Pyramid Head is one of the most successful survival horror game monsters um, in the games industry, I think. There's just something about it that is so disturbing and has been done so well. And so Silent Hill 2 is a bit of an unusual game in that within the one game we have examples of both really, really outstanding audio design and very, very average audio design. So it's quite interesting that you've got one game that sort of covers both, both ends of the spectrum, I believe. So even years on, Silent Hill 2 stands up pretty well. Graphically, sure, maybe there's some, a few rough edges there, but it's more the intent that's important and how effective it's been produced. And from a sound, from an audio point of view, um, I think there's some very effective moments in Silent Hill 2. So um, I would add that to the list of games to check out, as we have done, and we're working our way through 101 video games. Silent Hill 2 is on the list. Thank you very much for watching.